Before we get too far along in our tour of the tabernacle, let's think about the color selection for many of the beautiful hangings and later seen in the high priest's robes. The link there is certainly intentional. When Paul describes the heads of the two creations, he says, quote, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, 1 Corinthians 15, 47. Adam was dusty because he was made from dust. He was just like his environment. But Jesus is not like heaven. Heaven is like Jesus. He is the Lord from heaven. He makes heaven what it is. Everyone bears his image, wears his name, and shares his life. So we wouldn't say the high priest looked like the tabernacle. It's the tabernacle that looks like the high priest. We'll consider the subject of gold and linen more thoroughly when examining the high priest's garments. But clearly the white linen is consistently seen as righteousness, especially outworked righteousness. This makes perfect sense. Linen is made from flax, which grows up before God in the place it's planted. And white is actually all the colors of light combined in perfect balance. When all the characteristics of Jesus' humanity are united, we see he is right. Right in all he is and does and says. In fact, everything about him is just right. There was no yellow in the tabernacle, but there was a lot of gold, yellow to the max. Gold is not grown like linen, it's discovered. So it's a beautiful illustration of Christ's deity. Unlike the image of man that degenerates from gold to mud, in Daniel 2, verses 32 and 33, prophetically we read that his head is like the finest gold, Song of Solomon 5, verse 11. His hands are rods of gold, verse 14. And his legs are set on basis of fine gold, verse 15. With Jesus, it's gold all the way through. Regarding his deity, he never ceased to be what he always was. But as to his humanity, he fully became what he never was. Two substances like gold and linen were woven into one. Some today aren't as quick to accept the old explanations for the color scheme. Why should blue point to heaven? Why not water or something else? That's a fair question, so let's examine it. The only use in the Bible of blue, other than in the tabernacle, the temple, and the high priest's garments, was in the clothes of every Israelite. Quote, tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue thread in the tassel of the corners. Numbers 15, 38. The reason? So they would, quote, remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Verse 39. It was their lifeline to the God of heaven. The word corners in Hebrew is kanaf, and is also used for wings. What's the first mention of Kanaf? Speaking of the Exodus, the Lord said, I bore you on eagle's wings, Exodus 19, verse 4. In fact, to this day, as the Jew puts on his prayer shawl, he recites Psalm 104, verses 1 and 2. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. Do you see the link between the Israelites' clothing and God's heavenly blue curtain reflected in the tabernacle? David sees it, quote, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Psalm 61, verse 4. So the blue reminds us that the tabernacle was heaven on earth. It was the blue fringe of heaven that the woman touched when she sought healing, claiming the promise that, quote, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing 
in his wings. Malachi 4.2 and Matthew 9, verses 20 to 22. Unlike red and yellow, blue remains blue throughout all its shades. How like heaven's Lord that he is true blue all the time.